Hello students, welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Dr. Neelam Thapa from Dr. Hari Singh Gaur University Sagar MP. Today I will talk to you about creation of instructional manual for information literacy from paper, library use and user studies. We will try to understand the importance of information literacy program and how to design and develop an information literacy program in accordance to the user needs. We will also discuss how to create an instructional manual using instructional design models to effectively implement the information literacy program. So, what is information literacy? We today live in an information society, a society characterized by a dynamic, complex and information-rich environment. To survive in such an ever-changing society, an individual has to also change, upgrade and update oneself to keep pace with time. Lifelong learning is a necessity of information age and this can be achieved only when right information is available at the right time to an individual. Information literacy is a set of abilities to recognize when information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate and use effectively the needed information as given by American Library Association. So, information literacy is the key to access the right information at the right time and use it effectively also. But it's not easy to access the right information at the right time. Users have to be taught how to retrieve correct information quickly, analyze it and use it eth ethically and communicate it effectively. Libraries and librarians can perform this task of educating users efficiently because they understand the intricacies and complexities of information storage and retrieval. Also, they always have been conducting programs on user orientation and bibliographic instructions. But we have to keep in mind that when the developments in ICT and increased impetus on research, users need have changed and we have to also change our instruction programs accordingly. We have to enrich our instruction program by moving beyond library literacy and including digital literacy, media literacy, research literacy, etc. We will have to teach the students critical thinking skills that will help them determine when and where to find information and how to identify, access, evaluate and effectively use that information. This can be achieved through a well-designed information literacy program. So, now let us try to understand what is an information literacy program. Information literacy program can be defined as a systematically designed instructional program to teach information skills to users. It is a program that helps develop information abilities in an individual. A well-designed information literacy program can ensure that the objectives of producing info-literate individuals is met. So now let us see the objectives of an information literacy program. An information literacy program should be designed with the following objectives. To make a user info literate. This is the first objective. And when will a user be info literate? He'll be info literate if he has the ability to assess his information needs. He is aware of libraries and information centers and their services, knows about different sources of information, and is able to search for information by developing an appropriate search strategy. He should also be aware about information tools and have the ability to select and use appropriate tools. Ability to use IT for fast and pinpointed retrieval of information is mandatory in today's digital environment. Then, just retrieving information is not sufficient. Ability to compare and evaluate the retrieved information ability to manage information professionally and the ability to cite bibliographic information correctly is also required. Awareness about legal and ethical use of information and ability to use and communicate information effectively will also have to be taught. This will only lead to a person becoming info literate. Now second objective is to develop the ability in a user to access and use information effectively for both his personal and professional growth. There is no use of having information literacy if we are not able to use it for our growth 
personal or professional. Third objective is to convert a user into a lifelong learner. And fourthly, to enhance the socio-economic development of a country by promoting optimum use of information. Let us study the different methods of conducting information literacy program. Information literacy program may be conducted using many different methods. It may be online or offline. In both ways, it can be face-to-face, -face, where the teacher and learners interact in real time, as in video conferencing, in online teaching, or classroom instructions in offline teaching. But sometimes, it may not be conducted face-to-face -face in real time, like through recorded programs accessed through websites or CD-based tutorials. There may be another method, like one-shot program, or conducted in phases. It can be a short program of two to three hour duration or it can be a credit course in academic institutions spread over a semester. It can be conducted as a lecture program or as a workshop with many activities. Thirdly, it can be conducted by a library personnel alone or in collaboration with experts. Information literacy program may be provided by library personnel alone or in collaboration with the subject expert. This may depend on its objective. It may be conducted, for example, to introduce user to a new online resource or to guide the user through the complexities of completing an assignment or research project. The design and method of implementation of an information literacy program will depend not only on the user needs and expectations, but also on availability of staff, skill and know-how of staff and available budget. Now let's come to designing of an information literacy program. There are two important factors that must be considered while designing an information literacy program. The first factor is information literacy standards and the second one is the instructional design. Now, the first important factor to be considered while designing an information literacy program is IL standards. A standard represents a specific idea of what we expect the students to recall, replicate, manipulate, understand or demonstrate at some point and of how we will know how close a student has come to meeting that standard. Information literacy standards have been laid down by many institutes and associations of library and information science to guide librarians in assessing user needs, framing information literacy programs, and also in evaluation of performance outcome of users. Some of the important information literacy standards are American Library Association Information Literacy Standard for student and learning, ACR, ACRL standards, ALA information literacy competency standards for higher education, standards, performance indicators and outcomes, project sales skills list, the UK professional standards framework, the Australian and New Zealand information literacy framework, IFLA Information Literacy Standard. Now coming to the second factor that is to be kept in mind, that is the instructional design. And we will also realize what is its importance. Instructional design is a system of procedures for developing education and training programs in a consistent and reliable fashion. It is a complex process that is creative, active and iterative. An information literacy program should be designed using instructional design as it gives focus and direction in both designing and delivering an information literacy program. Instructional design is a systematic process which helps in dividing the curriculum into units which are logically and sequentially arranged and this helps the user to understand the concepts. Evaluation 
helps to understand the effectiveness of the information literacy program and also to modify and improve it. Above all, instructional design lays emphasis on the goal to be achieved and this ensures that the user learns the required skill. There are many models of instructional design proposed by different scientists, but they all share some common characteristics. First one is, instructional design is learner-centered. The focus of instructional design is learner and not the teacher. The whole emphasis is on what the learner needs to learn and how he has to be taught that. The instructions have to be performance-based. Second characteristic is, instructional design is goal-oriented. Objectives are of utmost importance in instructional design. The objectives are fixed at the beginning to provide direction and keep the teaching learning process focused on the required outcomes. Thirdly, instructional design focuses on real world performance. Instructional design does not aim at rote learning. It lays emphasis on learning the skills to perform the tasks assigned in real world situations. Instructional design focuses on outcomes that can be measured in a reliable and valid way. Evaluation is an important part of instructional design. Instructional design is performance-based and focuses on learning the skills. So, the evaluation is based on measuring the skill of the learner by performing a task rather than answering multiple choice questions. Another characteristic is, instructional design is empirical. Instructional design is based on facts. The whole process is based on data collection and analysis at every step, right from assessment of user needs to attaining of required skills. Instructional design is developed and modified accordingly based on this data analysis. Instructional design typically is a team effort. Teaching may be delivered by an individual, but instructional design is a team effort. Designing and development of a teaching program will require the contribution of a subject expert, instructional designer, multimedia expert, clerical staff, and the project manager. So students, now let us try to understand the different models of instructional design. There are many models for designing an instructional program. Some of the popular ones are, first one is 5E model of scientific teaching. It is based on first E that is engage. That means focus and stimulate the student's interest. Second E stands for explore. That means the student explores the topic prior to instructions by the teacher. Then thirdly, explain. Now the instructor explains the topic to the student. Fourthly, elaborate. Now, the students expand their understanding by applying what they have learned. And lastly, evaluate. The instructor evaluates the students throughout the process to understand what they have learned. Now, the second model is EDI. EDI stands for A for analysis. Analysis, that is assessment of user needs. B is for design, formulating objectives of the program and design of modules to achieve the objectives. Third D is for development, developing the modules in a systematic manner as per the design. And I stands for implementation. Whatever models have been created, implementing the modules step by step to develop the required skills in a learner. And E is for evaluation. We apply evaluative techniques to check if required performance outcome is achieved in the student. The third model of ID is backward design. In this model, the instructional design starts from identifying the goal of a learning process and moving backwards to achieve the same. So here, the first step is to identify the performance outcome, what we are aiming at, and then to develop a curriculum 
which will be able to achieve these performance outcomes. Next model is ASSURE. ASSURE stands for A for analyze. The learners are first of all analyzed. Then S stands for set standards and objectives. Here we set the standards and objectives that we are trying to meet through this program. Then S stands for select. That means we have to select certain strategies, technology, media and material which will be used in this program. Then U stands for utilize. Whatever strategies, technologies that we have selected, those technology, media and material will be utilized. Then require. R for require, that means it is required that there is a learner participation and E for evaluate and revise. So we evaluate the entire program and then revise it according to the requirement. The next model is Dick and Carey's model. This model is a procedural system including 10 major process components. There are 9 basic steps in an iterative cycle and are culminating evaluation of the effectiveness of the instruction. The first step here is to identify the instructional goals. What are we going to achieve through these goals? Second step is we have to conduct instructional analysis to determine what skills and knowledge are required. Thirdly, analyze learners and context to identify learners present skills, preferences and attitudes. This is very important. We have to first of all analyze what are the skills that a learner has in the beginning, starting of the program and what is his attitude and what, what does he want, what are his preferences. The fourth step is we write performance outcomes. We first identify what we are aiming at. Then fifth step is develop assessment instruments consistent with the performance objectives. Now we try to develop some ins assessment instruments through which we will able, we'll be able to gain the performance objectives that we are aiming at. Next step is develop instructional strategy. Now we chalk out a strategy, a plan about how to execute this program. Seventh step is develop and select instruction. Now we start developing and selecting instructions which will take us or take the students to the required outcome. Next step, the eighth step is design and conduct formative evaluation. Once we have inst instructed the students, now we try to design and conduct a formative evaluation of what is being done. Ninth step is revise instruction based on formative evaluation. After evaluating the instruction, we will realize what are our merits and what are our demerits and accordingly we will revise the instructional program. And the tenth step, design and conduct summative evaluation. After that, we design a program and conduct a summative evaluation. This model is based on feedback mechanism and self-regulating as the instructor processes, process is to be modified till the goals are reached. Now let us see what is the instructional manual for information literacy. Implementation of information literacy program requires an instructional manual. What is a manual? A manual is a book that gives you practical instructions on how to do something or how to use something such as a machine. So, an instructional manual for information literacy, also called as information literacy handbook or information literacy manual, can be defined as a handbook giving step-by-step -step instructions on how to conduct an information literacy program. It is to be used as a reference book by library professionals while planning, delivering and assessing an information literacy program. Now let's come to creating an instructional manual for information literacy. Following steps should be followed sequentially while creating the instructional manual for information literacy. The first step is selecting a target group. The users of libraries and information centers are varied with diverse needs. They are of different age groups, different educational levels and different subject interests. So it may not be possible to develop a common information literacy program which suits all the users. 
a target group of users should be selected and an information literacy program should be developed, customized to their needs. Second step is assessing the needs of the target group. Once a target group is selected, next step should be to assess their information needs. Both direct methods like survey and indirect methods like analysis of library records should be used for the purpose. Now we come to the third step that is setting the objectives of information literacy program. Before designing an information literacy program, the objectives of the information literacy program should be decided. We should be very clear about what we aim to achieve from the information literacy program. A study of the information literacy program standards laid down by many national and international bodies can also assist in this regard. Setting objectives will give direction to development of information literacy program and save both time and effort. Now, once the objectives are set, we move on to the next step, selecting an information literacy program method. As we know, information literacy program can be delivered in many ways. It can be a one-shot program of two hours or a program which is spread out throughout a semester and delivered in phases. So it is very important to decide how an effective information literacy program will be delivered. We should not only keep in mind our target group and its need, but also the time constraint faced by both the user and the library staff. Budget and expertise of the library staff are, all, are other issues that need to be kept in mind while deciding an information literacy program method. Then, next step is selecting an instructional design model. As we have seen, there are different models of instructional design and every model has its merits, demerits and applicability. All the models should be properly studied to decide a model that will suit the chosen method of delivering information literacy program and help us to achieve the objectives of the program. Next step will be adapting and incorporating new methods. With the changing times, information literacy programs are becoming more interactive and user-centered. There is marked increase in the use of technology by the users and so the use of technology to impart information literacy program is in vogue. Also, new methods are being used like library and faculty collaboration in design and implementation of the program. Extensive use of activities like drama and games to make the information literacy program more interesting. Use of multimedia to increase understanding. Use of online and offline methods and the concept of embedded librarian to make information literacy program self-paced and convenient for users. We will have to adopt these changes to make our information literacy program effective and successful. After this, next step will be using experiments and experiences of others. Different libraries have used different instructional design methods to develop information literacy program for their libraries. Also, many organizations have developed instruction manuals for information literacy. A library professional can study their experiences and suggestions to design an information literacy program suitable for one's library. Now we will see how to develop an instructional manual. An instructional manual is a document which will act as a guideline for implementation of an information literacy program. And so both this content as well as its presentation should be kept in mind while designing it. The steps to be followed for developing an instruction manual are First one is, constitute an editorial board. The board will decide its structure and format and prepare a draft outline of the document. Review the contents, organize the contents and be responsible for maintaining the standard of the manual. Once the editorial board is constituted, we move on to development of content. 
the content should be developed according to draft outline. The entire program should be divided into short clear steps which are logically sequenced and timed. Multi-author approach can be applied where different parts of the content are developed by different authors. This has many advantages. Expertise of professionals can be used. It's easier for an expert to concentrate on small specific area and it also speeds up the process. Other than the content, emphasis should also be given on how the content is to be delivered. Guidelines should be provided on preparation of instructor notes and handouts to users. Use of technology like interactive whiteboards, PowerPoint, clickers, and online polling, podcasts, extra can make the information literacy program more effective. Information on when to use and how to use technology should be made part of the information literacy manual. Once the manual is ready, we move on to the next step of testing the manual. The manual should be tested by implementing the information literacy program. Prior to implementation of information literacy program, the selection of the professional who will deliver the information literacy program should be done carefully, keeping his area of expertise in mind. The information literacy program should be implemented as per the instructional manual. But we should keep some flexibility to ensure that our objectives are met. Feedback from the target group can help us to evaluate the information literacy program and thus make improvements in the teaching learning process. Also, to understand how well structured, understandable and user friendly the manual is, feedback from library professionals providing information literacy instructions should be taken. The method of evaluation should be carefully and scientifically designed to get accurate results. A well-designed instructional manual will facilitate a smooth implementation of information literacy program. Once we have tested the manual and found it fit to meet our objectives, now comes the next step of preparation of manual for publication. After review, the content with illustrations should be organized according to the pre-decided format. The format should facilitate clear and understandable representation and also easy access and retrieval of information. Designing of cover page and title should also be done carefully as it should not only represent the context but be also attractive. Copyright clearance should be taken care of before the publication of the manual. So student, today we have learned many things about information literacy and how to design an instructional manual for information literacy. So now today let us try to sum up whatever we have studied. The importance of information literacy is now well recognized, but an information literacy program can only be effective if it is able to achieve its goal of making the user infoliterates. So it is imperative to design an information literacy program which is based on instructional design principles and models. An information literacy program should be a systematic process, sequenced into logical steps, keeping in mind the user needs and the required performance outcomes. It should be evaluated throughout the process and modified and adapted according to the objectives. The method of imparting information literacy program are varied. Any one method cannot suit all situations. It is necessary that a method or combination of methods be carefully chosen. The information literacy program that needs to be packaged in the form of a manual for easy reference at the time of designing, implementing and assessing an information literacy program. So the content in the manual should be systematically organized, clearly stated and quickly accessible. A thoughtfully designed information literacy program will require an instructional manual for effective delivery and an instructional manual for information literacy if carefully designed and developed will provide clear guidelines to information professionals and on how to impart information literacy to its users. 
to achieve the required performance outcome.